שלום שלום לכולם, לשבוע טוב. על כות רבי יהודה, how are you? Okay, so we... Yeah, let's have the, the ball uh, rolling. We started with with halacha according to Ben Shai. Um, and the Pasha Mitzavim. Halacha that deal with that deal deal with um, Rosh Hashanah. Only a few days left before we get there. I did ask a question as to how do you understand Rosh Hashanah? I do not need to repeat that because um, my Rosh Yeshiva gave a shiur this morning, gave exactly the what the lies behind, the thought behind everything. So the answer was given this morning by Rabbi Pinchas. So we continue with Halachot where we have left off here, um, last week. Rabbi Ishai ended, I think, uh, number all uh, Alacha Yud Gimel, if I'm not mistaken. So then we are taking off from um, Alaha Yud Dalet. It reads as follows. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, we send it the pages. Uh, wow. Bear with me. A second for me. Ah. Just, just be with me. I'll be done in a few seconds. Okay. The pages are there. For those who are able to follow in Hebrew, the Hebrew version of the page is also there. It reads as follows. The shofar is blown in two occasions. Not two occasions, sorry. The shofar is blown in two sessions. The first is called the seated tekiot because one one may then be seated. And the second, during the Amida prayer of Musa, or Musaf, sorry, not Musa, but Musaf, and the repetition of that prayer, called the standing tekiot, because one is then standing. Rabbi Kish, welcome. It has been for a while. Yeah, thank you very much. I've, I've been up and down, out of the country and so on. Oh, yeah? Yeah, thank oh, you. That's, that's, that, that's, that's good. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, con congratulations on Yasimha. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, Toda. Thank you very much. May it be next. For, for you, being you are there next. For us. 
Ah, to the rabba. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can't wait. To, I can't wait to witness that. Ah, to the rabba, Baruch Hashem. <laughs> okay, we are on Alacha. Alacha, okay. according to Ben Shkai, the Alachot on uh, Rosh Hashanah. Thank you. We just got it started. Um, the second during the the Amida prayer of Musaf and the repetition of that prayer called the standing tekiot because one is then standing during the Amida. Each session comprises three sections. In each of of which the so the shofar is blown somewhat differently to comply with the various hierarchical uh, details. We will see, we will see, and you we witness that. Um, you see how, how the shofar is being blown and a different type of uh, shofar blowing. The person who blows the shofar should explicitly declare before blowing, I have in mind that everyone who he, who hears me blowing the shofar during both sessions should fulfill his obligation in this mitzvah. Even though it is assumed that this is the case, it is preferable to declare one's intention. It's not just to get up and, I mean, once you are appointed to do that, Get, get up and no, you have to, to declare. You have to declare that this is the intention. Alaha continues. Alaha continues. Neither the congregation nor the person who blows the shofar should speak of anything apart from the prayers from the time that the bracha is recited until after the end of the second session the person who blows the shofar should not even recite the, should not recite the verses and the prayer which the congregation recites after returning the sefer torah to the to echal before musa it's not about i haven't witnessed it but uh, the fact that alaha bring it forth is because it has been noticed by our Chachamim um, that sometimes people uh, forget and they start uh, talking. Allah says no. We shouldn't speak at all of anything apart from the prayer, apart from the prayer, nothing else. Allah Yud Hey, 15. One must hold the shofar while he's reciting the bracha. And it is customary to cover it until after completing the bracha. Again, another source is, is, is given here, or a reference rather. It's a, it's a something, um, This is something that has been observed that maybe I should I shouldn't go there. You must hold the shofar in your hand, but which hand? You must hold the shofar while reciting the bracha. This goes to anything else. Okay, in this context, but in a in a large scheme or in a large picture of, of things, you must you must hold in the hand of of the subject or anything or the subject of the bracha. You must have it in a, in your hand. Just as like Alakha requires you to hold, for example. If you are drinking, or if you are eating fruit or whatever, 
you must hold it in hand. Don't recite a bracha with the hand, just uh, at loose. You must have it. You must, when it says kavana, you must also able to see the thing that you are the subject of your, your, your bracha. It's not about, this is for example, the shofar. Hey, well, it's in my hand and I'm reciting the bracha. I'm looking on the other side. Well, I'm looking somewhere else. And I recited the bracha. No. You must have, hold it in your hand. Allah continues. Before reciting the bracha, when you should do knock on the bima to attract everyone's attention to the bracha. And they then say, Birushut, Morai Verabanan, Verabotai. And then he recited the bracha aloud, having in mind to include the entire congregation. It's not about it's not about you, it's about it's about the congregation. So you find in many of us in a bed, can I say? We have our little conversation. What oh, did you see? Did you see? Do, do you know? Do you know? It is because of that you are required to to knock on the bima so that you call the attention of everybody. Because many people usually they are caught up into into ordinary matters that they've got nothing to do. But they've got nothing to do with. Uh, with anything, with the service, with the Torah, nothing. Even if it has got to do with the Torah, you have to, you don't interrupt the flow of, of the service. Allah continues, if one who does not hear well, sit some distance from the Bima, and they cannot clearly hear the Bracha, he should recite the bracha himself at the same time as the person who blows the shofar. And then listen to the sound of the shofar. We are required to listen. I remember Rabbi Pinchas gave us a shiur on this in depth of it. Why, why the mitzvah is to listen to the, to the shofar? This is a Dorita, not a Drabanan. Why am I required to, to hear that sound? Bezot Hashem, we will see in a, probably this week. We will see. Why is so important? And what does it mean to listen? Alaha continues. In some communities, it is customary to stand when listening to the bracha over the sofa. In, in some communities, does not mean a meaning, does not mean every community is like that. Follow your mini hug. That is the implication here. While in other community, it is not customary to do so. Yeah, in Baghdad, it is not a customer to stand. Ben Shai says, here in Baghdad, it is not a customary to stand. Follow the minihag. Allah Yud Bav. One takes the shofar in one's right hand and places it to the right side of one's mouth, if it possible. As I have said at the very, very beginning, you are required to have the, the subject of your bracha into your hand. It's not a, <laughs> well, I don't need to, to repeat that. And it says you place it 
to the right side of your mouth. There is a, there is a, there is a, what does it mean really? I, maybe I should ask a question. What does it mean? Place it to the right side of one's mouth. The right side. Yes, the right side. Not uh, left. <laughs> because we know what, what all, as I said, uh, all, yeah, we keep on emphasizing this. There is no side of the body does not mean anything. And that there's no limb, no organ of the body does not represent something and does not mean anything. When the Chachamim are saying, put it on your right side of the mouth, follow that. There is a reason why. There is a reason why. Why not on the left? Because when you take, for example, the, the order of the sephirot, the 10 sephirot, we know exactly everything that is on the left side, we know exactly what it means. Alaha continues. The person who calls out the sequence of the notes must call out the first sequence as well. And it is not considered an interruption between the bracha and the mitzvah. As it is required for the mitzvah. Alaha continues. The mouthpiece of the shofar may not be damaged by even the slightest imperfection. One should do, check this and then repair it if necessary before Rosh Hashanah. What does it mean? This is the mouth of the, I'm using this cup. I'm using this cup as an, as an example, not an example, to illustrate. Um, this is the mouth of the, um, the shofar, if there is a crack, that by implication of this, Allah, that, that, that shofar has got a defect. You cannot use it. So then you should repair it before Rosh Hashanah. Again, when we brought Okay, this is about the shofar. Also, I came across a lacha, lacha that you should know, that the vessel that you also use for Netilas Yadayim should not also have, a, how do you call it? It's not a crack. If a, if a, if a, if a piece is off, what? what? A chip? What is a chip? What? Yes, that's right. A chip, you call it a chip? Ah, a chip. How do you spell a chip? Oh, oh, chip. Oh, okay. One of the uh, English speaking person, he called it a chip. It's called a chip. When it, when it has got a chip, sorry, you cannot also use uh, that uh, vessel to perform Natilasia dying. So, so is the shofar, if it is, it's invalid. Okay, invalid is my own word, but that is the implication of the halakha. Halakha yud zayin, if one is if one is unable to attend the synagogue and someone comes to blow the shofar at home, one must stand when listening.
When am I to stand when you're listening? Since one did not hear the shofar during the Musaf prayer, and the one now fulfills the Torah obligation, one must stand in the same way that one must stand when counting the Sefirah. Alaha continues. Women are exempt from listening to the shofar. As it is a mitzvah, which is performed at a specific time. Nevertheless, most women have accepted upon themselves as an obligation. And they come to the synagogue in order to hear the shofar. A woman who is accustomed to hear the shofar each year becomes obligated to hear it. And if she is unable to attend the synagogue, one should go to a home to blow the shofar for her. But she may not recite the bracha. It is also the, the custom in our family. I just wanted to add a few things, comment on this uh, alakha. Um, we know that there is uh, this thing called pre uh, prescription law. If you are used to do something, something good, and you take it upon yourself that this is what you are you are doing. It becomes you are, it it becomes an obligation. To you. So you have got no right to to divert. One way or the other. This is the implication of what is being said here. Women, I exhibit. But if women have taken up them, upon themselves to listen to the blowing of the shofar, it is a good thing. But the, the negative effect of it is when you have taken an obligation upon yourself by dropping it or by not doing it anymore. There is a pasuk in the call it. Hashem does not want you to take an oath. Okay, this is not an oath, but it's an obligation that you have taken upon yourself. It would be counted as a good thing, but not to do it. You may put yourself in a, in a very awkward position, God forbid. Something that you are accustomed to do, you have to keep. Alaha <laughs> continues. If a woman is accustomed to attend the synagogue each year to listen to the shofar, we, we have read that. On one occasion, she's unable to attend and is also not able to get someone to come to a home. She should absorb herself of this custom before Rosh Hashanah. Again, Alaha here, Alaha here, give a conditional or the situation. If the situation arises that enable you not to Will feel your obligation. This is in the context of a woman, of a woman, of a woman. If the situation is one way or the others does not 
uh, enable you to go to the synagogue in order to hear the shofar. And he's also not able to get someone to come to a, to a home. She should absolve herself of this, uh, of this custom before Rosh Hashanah. This is when we, we, we cancel uh, the vows that we have taken. Because that, ob that obligatory custom of you that you have taken upon yourself, it's in truly in a form of a, of a vow that this is you pledged to do. But now the question is, the question of this halakha, I wanted to, to, to all the thought that it just came to, to me now, we have got a, <laughs> if, if the women are exempted from hearing the sofa, I did not come across Alakha that says women could also blow the shofar. What? Women yeah. could also blow the shofar. I did not come across that Alakha. Yeah. They can? There is no man who is, uh, who can blow for the, for the community. Uh -huh. There is only women she can blow and there are more women. And there is no man in the place who know how to go to shofar, and uh, there is no katan who can go to shofar. Uh -huh. uh, my rabbi just corrected me, or just added to what I was saying that I did not see in alaka that a woman can blow shofar. If there is no other option, can. Okay. There's only women. Yes. She can do. Yes. I, I, there is no man who can do. Yes. And no katan. She will do the last solution. Yes. She's muta. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, 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 I was coming there. I was coming there, my rabbi. So, so my rabbi just. Because when you say women can, it's become they can. They don't listen to the next sentence. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, ah, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Now I got it. <laughs> because the, there are those who just uh, get it the first and yeah, they say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh, there's one rabbi who says, no, we, we, we. No, no, no. Um, my rabbi said, in the situations where there is no man, In the situations that even if there is a many, but they, they are unable to. One way or the other, they are unable to. A woman can also blow the chauffeur. So now there is a one aspect on, on this specific alaha. Huh? because it speaks about a woman who used to go to the Beit Knesset to hear the shofar, but one way or the other, she is unable to go. And there is no one to go to her house. She can absorb herself. But there is also another aspect of Alakha. And what is this aspect of Alakha? Is when, for example, okay, there is a someone. There is a someone who can go to a house. Do I blow the sofa outside of the house? Or do I go into the in the house? The question is, uh, just a, a thought that came to me. A woman who used to meaning who took upon herself the obligation to go to the Beit Knesset and they hear the shofar, the blowing of the shofar. But one way or the other, she's unable to go to, to, to Beit Knesset and that there is no one yeah. to go to her house to blow the shofar. 
she can then absorb herself. Meaning release herself from that obligation that she took upon herself. Now my question, yes, Robert Knechas. We will be what Allah. According to the Allah, we have learned previously, we learned that uh, it's without a bracha. So she's not kit, she's not yet yet on the mitzvah of uh, Kiat I beg your pardon? So she's not, uh, she's not yet set of the mitzvah Kiat Shofa. If she's alone, there's no bad message, no one going for her. And the Shofa, she blow with a bracha, and she's yet set? No, no. Uh, that element was not brought into the, into the, uh, in Halakha. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to believe that there is no one, and she cannot come. I mean, she's, she's just only one. I wanted to believe that she can recite the, the bracha. Yeah. Because, yeah, because she's the only one. Yeah, she's the only one. Yes. So the Allah has said that women and Katan okay. are not able to make the other people youth say. Uh -huh. But they can make themselves you'd say. Okay. So meaning if she is alone, she can say the bracha for her to okay. do the mitzvah. Okay. But if she is in the place where there is only women, yes, she will do the okay. bracha also. Okay. But if it's for men, we should find no men being able to do the shofar at, 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 all, at all, at all, at all, at all, at all, at all. And at that moment, she will be given the power of making the men you'd say. That's very mm -hmm. rare. Mm -hmm. And the katan, same thing. You cannot make someone you'd say. Yeah. But himself, yes. Yes. But if there is no one, even no woman who knows how to blow, no man who knows how to blow, if it's a katan, at the moment, we receive the power to do the bracha and to blow. Mm -hmm. So for themselves, if you're alone, yes. Yes. Just like uh, my, my Rosh Yeshiva here said, what in the event that she is alone? There are so many situations that could suggest, um, not only suggest, that could make you to be alone. Maybe you have moved to a place and there are no Betik and Esiot. Maybe situation uh, could suggest that too. Can you blow the shofar? Can you recite the bracha? My Rosh Shiva gave an answer. Yes, we can. I mean, not we. <laughs> she can. <laughs> she can recite a bracha. And previously, we also learned that she can also blow the shofar. When? When in the situation? Suggest that there are no men at all, at all, <laughs> to blow the shofar. So, Bishai, I will be on time, don't worry. <laughs> oh, not today? Okay. So, no, uh, again, I, I come back to my question. Um, we have got, maybe I should ask my Roshi Yeshiva while he's here. Uh, Rabbi Pinchas, in the event that no one could go to a house and the sea cannot go to the Beit Knesset, the one who is going to a, assume that there is someone who can go to his, to a house. And we have got uh, the halakha, all halakhot that divide between, that not that it divide, that one should be not a man and a woman should not be in a closed area together. So where do I blow the shofar? 
if I uh, say I am appointed to go and blow the shofar for here, where do I blow the shofar? You can blow in the house, let the door open. Okay. The door should be open like the, anyone can enter at any moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe we understood the my question, which I have uh, posted, or like I ask Rabbi Pinakasi to help us understand the details of um, Alaka when it comes to you being not allowed to be in a closed um, a room um, with a woman who is not your wife. So are you allowed to go to that place? Well, the opinion has gave me an, an answer. The answer is, yes, you can go there. And then um, when you blow the shofar, the door of the house should be open. Even when you don't go. So the word you answer, and, and, you and, the door open. Yeah. And even if you, know, you are not, even if you are not, because Allah uh, Allah is, is it's not only in this context, but in all the other cases, um, like all the other cases, Ben Shchai in other in other places he would say, uh, once a woman is is married, for example. He's not allowed to be in the same room with a, a cousin or brother. <laughs> He's not, unless uh, the door is, uh, is open. If not, no, no, not to. Yes, but the Benjamin. You, huh? Oh, did I? Okay, so that, so that was So, I think I'm going to end with uh, Alaka. 18, from Rosh Hashanah until Kippur, the Hatima of the third bracha of the Amida is a Melech Agados, rather than Abel Natanjana is coming in a few minutes. Just the battery of his uh, computer is low. A few seconds. Thank you. Hello, Rabbi. It is Kish. Kish. Oh, happy Kish. How are you? I'm good. Ah, we're happy to see from you. Thank you. Happy to see you too. Ah, when, when do we meet? I, I've not been around. I traveled, those, that's why I've not been joining the, the lessons. Ah, when did you come in Israel? I, I, I came in about two weeks ago. One more time, it was uh, off. Come in Israel, we hope to see you soon. We have many to discuss. How do you come into Nigeria? Is that true? Yeah, we are preparing it, yes. <laughs> With a lot of discretions, but we are coming soon. Okay, okay I'll, I'll be uh, hoping to hear from you. I will tell you in private, no problem. Thank you, Sudara so Warabi. Welcome. Have a Thank
Rabbi Shimon, what is this now? Nakarapun. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Dov. Um. Sorry for sorry for that. Um. I run. I ran out of the battery. So. Yeah. Alaha Yud Ched from Rosh Hashanah until Kippur. We, we read that, sorry. You see, all this, they are in Yosidu. They are in Yosidurim. If Alaha continues, if one said, Ha'el Hakadosh, or even one of one, all even if one is unsure whether he said Amelech Hakadosh, one should repeat the Amida from the beginning. It's one of those cases eh, that uh, in Yosidu there are provisions where where Allah requires you that once you omit that, you are required to go back to the beginning. Allah continues. If you once said Hamelech Hakadosh, and immediately after what, within the time of Kedet uh, Dibur, one remembered and corrected to oneself by saying Hamelech Hakadosh, the correct is valid. The correction is valid. If Shalia Hatibur makes a mistake, he must repeat the prayer like anyone else. He's not exempted too. And he must also repeat the Kedusha. This also applies to the Me'en Sheva recited after the, the Amidah of Aravit on Shabbat. In my work, Mecca BCL, I concluded that although some authorities disputed this ruling, it accords with the opinion of our teacher, the result, and we do not apply the rule of not repeating, we do not apply the rule of not reciting a doubtful bracha against the ruling of our teacher, the result. I think we end here for today on Allah Quot. No, not we are ending today. No, it's because of time. From my side, I end here. Rabbi Ishai will continue, I think tomorrow. Right? <laughs> okay, number 19. 19. So, we see each other tomorrow. Is there any question? Sorry. No, 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 no. We still have got. Uh, we still have got um, something to. It's only enough. Oh, well, it's already afternoon. So. Not now, but uh, I continue with my my mood. Um. Let's get our Tanakhim. Our limut is going to be very short for today. Is the um, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I need uh, I need
So to bear with me. Let's get it to our Tanakhim, Tehillim chapter one. Tehillim chapter one. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Yeah. Um, you need a picture of this? Or you put it over there? I'm going to introduce you to the world of Tehillim. Many people like Tehillim. Psalms. Psalms. Um, there is a word that we are going to talk about that appearing in Tehillim chapter one. You will notice it because it does not is not obvious. It does not appear as I'm writing it. You have got Aleph. You have got Lamet, and then you have got Chet, and then you have got Dalet. You don't see that in that tailing. The page is in the page of the tailing, according to Ben Shai. Let's read what uh, that tailing is saying. In the way this name appear in the tailing. I should say, learn, learn Torah with uh, the rabbis of the soul. Because the Torah is a code. Or the Indah Tanakh is a code. You will not be able to understand it if you are just reading it uh, on your own. On the passage that is before the Tehillim itself, before the first pasuk of the Tehillim, it reads as follows. I will hurry up. Shemosh Tehillim, the heading. Katuvi tie bekele fu tavi ad bring a quotation a quotation call a shell ya ase ya tliach besham shelo el had what is el had It must refer to something. Ketad. But before I get there, let's read what the Tehillim is saying. We read the Pasuk 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. It reads as follows in Hebrew. Ashrei Haish. Praiseworthy is the person or the man. Ashel Lo Halach Ba'atzad Reshaim. Ubaderech Kataim. Lo Amad Vimoshav 
לצים, לא היה שוב. פסוק ב', כי אם בתורת, בתורת, אדוני חפצו ובתורתו הגה יומם בלילה. פסוק ג' וסט רי והיה כעץ שתול על מתפלגי מים אשר פריו ותן ביתו ועלהו לו יבולו וחור אשר יעשה יצליח Let's read it there. Let's try to see the benefit of the English is speaking. Praiseworthy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. And they stood not in the path of the sinful. And they sat not in the, in, the in the session of his corners. But his desire is in the Torah of Hashem. And in his Torah, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree deeply rooted alongside the brooks of water that yields It's a fruit in its season, and the wheat leaves never with us. And everything that he does will succeed. Shalom, Tzadik. Now let's go to Ben Shkais. In the Torah world, particularly the world of thought. We look at it, the gamatriot of the, the letters. We are also looking at, there are so many methods, many systems, how to, to decode the, the Hebrew word. In this case, Let's look at where that name comes from before we get to a, a word that I, not the word, but to a thing called Reshaim, Russia. And who is Russia? Bear with me, this two, These are four letters. Where they original come from? Sorry, I, this is the, the word that uh, Ben Shai started with. And they said, Aleph, Is it from the word, from the word Ashray? You remember? You remember um, the, the Tehilim 145? Ashray. 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 It's where the Aleph is taken from. Whereas Lamed, Lamed is taken from the word law. Law. Whereas Chet is taken from the word Yatsliach. Good. Lamed, Yud, Chet, 
the Chet is taken from there. Whereas Dalet is from the word Derech. What does that mean? Again, this has got to do with Tikkun Midot. And I'm going to end with that, with this explanation. When we look at when we look at our world from a different angle, from politics or from philosophy or from uh, business or from even from the religious world. We do have got, we encounter scoffers. People who make mockeries of, um, of others. We have got to so many people who make just yeah, scoff, not, not scoffers, sorry, I beg your pardon. Scorners, scorners. Okay, there is also another word, scoff. But the Taylim uses the word this scorners. But but this word, like I always say, there is always, I mean, not all, there is always, every word that you see in the, in the Tanakh is an acronym. And that this is an acronym. This word formed from the first letter of, of each of those words. But what does it really does it really mean? A person it says astray. Let me just re read it exactly what uh, what has been quoted by. So Ben Shai went on to say Katuv. What does really that, that mean? Let me come quickly before we get to understand this word carefully. Let's look at uh, what is called Reshaim. Reshaim is spelled with Resh. Because this appears, this name appears that it's somebody who is, uh, who, um, who avoid himself into the way of the Rishayim, into the way of wickedness. He avoid being in their seasons, I mean, sessions. Sessions? Yeah, sessions. In their gatherings. He avoid, he avoid him ordinal talk, gossip, 
tail bearing. He avoids mocking. The assembly of mocking. He avoids himself into, I mean, he avoids himself from anything that he has that he has got nothing with it, with it, with it, with it, Torah. He acquires this name. He acquires this name. In what sense? Let's look at uh, Rashaim. 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 Can you see there, Rashaim? Let's put it in the grammatical value of the word Rashaim. A Russia, a Russia can also be a very pious person. How? Where's that thing? Where's that thing? The cap of this thing. I'm looking for the cap of this thing. What? And the what? I don't know. I don't know. I throw it to somewhere. I don't know. Okay, never mind. A Russia can also be a very pious person. In, in what sense? This morning, you were given a, a, I mean, in a Rabbi Pinchas's class. What did we learn? The secret of Rosh Hashanah. He listed exactly the world, the world of Kedusha, what is on the, on, on, in the world of Kedusha, all on the side of Kedusha. But there is also the opposite. The world of the world of Klippa, that has got the same structure, more or less the same structure. And I remember in one of, in one of his limud, he says the only thing that is not in the world of Klippa is the art. Right, Rabbi Pinchas? <laughs> That's the only, but the rest, they, they correspond. What you have on the world of Kedusha, you do have got the opposite force, forces. How so? How so? Is when we look at the word, before I get there, we know the word Ketel, right? Ketel is written, calf. Tet, sorry, tough, I mean, sorry, no. And fresh. The gamatro value of the word the kettle, we know that uh, calf is 20. And the tough is 400. And the resh is 200. Equal to two, 620. That's the kettle. Kettle. 620. Does it not ring a bell? Of course it rings a bell. How many mitzvot do we have of the Torah? 600, 613. Six hundred and twenty minus six hundred and thirteen. Then we have got seven. And it says the non-Jewish world was given the seven laws of Noah. So seven plus plus six hundred and and 13, it amounted to 620. 
But when we look at the word reshaim, it has got also the same gamatro value. The same gamatro value, 630, I mean 20. How do I then identify? How do I differentiate? How do I differentiate between the world of Kedusha and the world of Reshaim? Because they, they have got the same, the same gamma value. Probably meaning that is it not probably. Could it mean that they are the same? If they are root? Only here that they are different. Could it be that? I don't know, but let's see. This morning, when in the, the remote of Rabbi Pinchas, he said at the end, try to try to be on the side of Kedusha. Only when you are in the side of Kedusha, you will be able to defeat the world of, of the clipot or the clipper. If you're not, you are stuck. And they use the word you are done. You are done. The same thing. When, when you are not meditating according to the Tehillim, when you are not meditating on the word of Hashem, or I mean in the Torah of Hashem, according to, the, to that Tehillim, not avoiding yourself to be in the assemblies of scorners, You are done. You are in the same, the same here. You are ruined. Pastor Shalom. You are done. What prevents you then from from going all absorbed into this world of Klippa is when you and I engage into Torah study day and night. If we are, and when we are, busy ourselves into the Torah, his Torah, then we are assured that we will be we will, you will succeed. The word, you will succeed in your ways. Only when you say law, according to these letters, law to what? Law to the assemblies of scorners. So much to say in this, according to Ben Shkai. Best of the will continue with the same theme tomorrow. He went deeper than I have just covered so far. We will continue tomorrow, Best of Hashem. Because um, We didn't cover the gamatro value of each of these letters, of four letters. Elechad. I give you a hint what we are going to cover tomorrow. The gamatro value of Dalet, of Aleph is one, right? And the Al 
and the, and the lamed is the 30, right? And the chet is eight, and the dalet is four. It's equal to what? 43. What does that mean, really? That's what I say. We will, uh, we will see that tomorrow. I'm running off time now. Thank you very much, Mr. Bikim, Mr. Dakota, for having given me a space to share with you. We will uh, take up uh, where we have left off today. Any question for now? No, it's okay. To the Rabbi Rabbi Enlatan. Yeah, Rabbi Yehuda, how is Cameroon? Cameroon is okay. I, I, I was, I was, uh, I, I was following a documentary about um, about the empire of Kush. Okay. Yes. 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 About yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so much, uh, so much that side of the world that I did not know, um, <laughs> but I have heard a bit of it. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and the place of the shame. What's that question? Uh, part of what I, 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 I follow in that documentary. Okay. It's also in the lesson of Taylin today. Mm -hmm. That we have just learned so far, uh, but uh, <laughs> there is a yeah, there, there are a few things in there. So, but uh, we will continue. Best of the Okay, best of the shame, best of the shame, Blini there. So that Rabba, so that Rabba, so that Rabba, and thank you very much. We see thank each you other too. tomorrow. Okay. Baruch Amen, Amen, Amen. Amen, Amen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Rabbi Kish.